Hello. Hello there. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Catherine. Catherine. And where are you, Catherine? Southampton. Oh, OK. I was sort of hoping for global. But there you go. South Southampton's no. good. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do at Southampton, Catherine? I work in the nursing team at a GP surgery down here for the NHS. Oh, OK. So is a, a GP surgery kind of less under pressure or is it a bit calmer for you guys than the hospitals? About the same. About the same. OK, well, thank you very much for, uh, <laughs> for doing this. It's very kind of you. OK, Catherine, off you go with your story. OK, so a few years ago, I was at an ex's family wedding. Oh, yeah. So we were all outside for the group pictures and the boys were at the back and the girls were at the front. So I put my hands behind my back and squeezed and groped my ex-partner's cock and balls. Okay. And She's a nurse, everyone. She's a nurse. What I didn't realise was because my ex-partner was best man, that he had moved places with his dad. <laughs> so essentially what I was doing is stood in a field on a really hot summer's day, squeezing my ex-father-in-law's penis and testicles. <laughs> Catherine, I like that story. I think you can walk. <laughs> Walk, off you go. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I can walk. Yeah. No. So, yeah, that's what walk. happened to me. Walk. Walk. Oh, walk, sorry. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's dress up Friday in your house. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Natasha. Natasha, and where are you? Uh, I'm in Ashby in the Midlands. Very good. And you haven't let standards drop. You look lovely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what do you do in normal circumstances? Uh, I work for the National Trust. Oh, so I know, they're all shot, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, OK. So uh, you're doing this. Uh, off we go with the story. So um, I'd just come back from a super intense gym workout and my legs were feeling really wobbly, but I'd gone for a shower, uh, realised I'd left my shampoo outside of the shower, opened the door to reach for said shampoo, and as I went to reach for it, my legs gave way and I slipped and I fell straight onto a very pointy um, shower gel bottle that penetrated my... Bum hole. Oh, that has never happened. No one has ever, <laughs> by accident. Hello, uh, nice job with the chair. Where are you? I'm in Dublin. Dublin, and what's your name, sir? Uh, Loic. Loic? Yes. Okay, uh, off you go with your story. So when I was about 10, my parents brought me to Belgium on a family holiday and they have a landmark called the Mannequin Piss, which is a statue of a little boy peeing. Yeah. And I was seeing this everywhere, and I found this hilarious. And then we <laughs> went into a gift shop, and they had a little miniature version of it with a little button underneath. So I went over to it, pressed the button, and it started hissing. So it was like, Psss. and I found this hilarious. So I was like, calling my mum over. I was like, you can hear him peeing. So I held it up to her ear and it turns out the hissing was a gas because it was a lighter and I set my mum's hair on fire in the shop. <laughs> Very good. You can walk. Off you go, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Well done. That was good at everything. They're pissing, a mother with her hair on fire. Bravo, Loic. Hi, who are you? I'm Georgia. And where are you, Georgia? I'm in Doncaster, Yorkshire. OK. All right. Homegrown. Yes. And uh, what do you do when you can? I'm a waitress. Oh dear, so downtime. <laughs> <laughs> Loads. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, good luck to you and I uh, hope you get back to work soon. Thank you, thanks. Right, off you go with your story. <laughs> um, so when I was eight years old, we went on a houseboat down in Australia and the houseboat was, uh, had a jacuzzi and everything. So me, my brother and my mum decided to hop in while my family kind of sat around and watched. And I didn't really know what to do because I was eight. So I decided to do what I'd seen like Buddhists do. So I crossed my legs and I put my hands up and I started humming. And my mum was facing like with her back towards me. So I, I called her over and I was like, oh, mum, mum, look, I'm masturbating, I'm masturbating. <laughs> and um, that's when she turned around and she told me, Georgia, never say that again. You were meditating. Please don't go back to school and tell the teachers that you were masturbating in the hot tub for your summer vacation. You can walk. <laughs> A brilliant story. Thank well you. told. Very good. Thank you so much. Un <laughs> unplug yourself and walk. Hello. Hi. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And where are you, Elizabeth? Currently in Florida in the United States. Okay, very good. And you've made a nice job there trying to make your chair a red chair. Well done. Thank okay. you. Uh, off to go with your story, Elizabeth. Um, so in 2005, 2006, I was a volunteer in the United States Peace Corps um, in West Africa. And uh, some friends and I decided to take a little vacation. 
down to an animal preserve. And it was about a six or seven hour trip. And the last leg of the journey, we were riding in the back of a pickup truck uh, through the desert. And in order to save room, what they do is they put uh, the livestock and the luggage in the bed of the truck. And then the women and children sit on that. And then the men sit on a bar that wraps around the back of the truck and their knees are kind of straddling either side of your head. And uh, so we're riding along and we hit a pretty big dip in the sand and it just rocked the entire vehicle. And right at that moment, the guy who was sitting above me lost his balance and fell. And when he did, his traditional outfit went over my head like a tent and his balls went straight into my mouth. And I just screamed out, I just got teabagged. I'm going to flip you. I'm going to flip you just because I have to flip somebody. Good to end a bit of teabagging. Hi, who are you? Hi, Graham. I'm Nicole. Hi, Nicole. And where are you? I'm in beautiful Dollar, Scotland. Oh, gorgeous. What do you do up there? I am a cake maker. I make custom cakes. Oh, right. So are you continuing to make your cakes now? Right, or is... right now, it's we're kind of on a break at the moment. I've got lots of clients that have been postponing, so we're just going to pick it up when everything's safe to do it again. You should force them to have the wedding cakes now. <laughs> <laughs> you ordered it. Here it is. Yeah, take it. <laughs> <laughs> take it. Do what you like with it. Uh, OK, off you, off you go with your story. OK, so my first year married, uh, my first Christmas married, I had just recently moved to Scotland. And my husband thought it would be great to gift me with a land title, which then bestowed upon me the prestigious title of lady. Uh, so I should clarify, my husband's full name is Alexander Garden. So I, brand new to the culture and not knowing anything, any inside jokes from here, spent six months walking around telling anyone who would listen, oh, isn't it lovely? I'm a lady garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to flip you, but that is a good story. There she goes. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, um, who are you? Oh, my name's Jennifer. Jennifer, and where do we find you today, Jennifer? Um, I'm from Oak Hill, Virginia, which is outside of Washington, D.C. OK. And uh, in normal circumstances, uh, what do you do? Um, well, I'm actually still working. I am a dog walker. Dogs got to walk. Yes, they do. <laughs> Fish got to swim. Um, OK, <laughs> off you go with your story. Um, so this happened many years ago. I went out with my roommate, Chris, for dinner. And we had a lovely dinner and decided to keep carrying on with some drinks at the bar. Uh, went up to the bar and we were having a couple beers and chatting and having a, a very good time. Every time I looked up, this girl was staring at me from across the bar. And I thought she looked familiar, so I said to Chris, I think this is this girl that I went to college with. I really didn't like her. She was mean. I thought she was <laughs> ugly. She looked like a horse. So the whole time, the horse face girl is staring at me. We have a couple more beers, and I have my liquid courage and decide that I'm going to go over and confront her. As I start to get up, I realize that it was not a girl from college. I was looking at myself in a mirror the entire time. So, Good yeah, I thought, story. I, yeah. You can so walk. Was, okay, you can thank walk. you. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, what's your name? My name is Didia. And where do we find you? We are in Manhattan today. Because we can't go anywhere else. <laughs> no, so exciting. Very good. We're keeping calm. We're drinking champagne. Uh, off you go with your story. So when I graduated from university, I bought a one-way ticket. I had a fistful of cash, and I moved to Rome, Italy. And I didn't speak Italian. And I bought a moped, which was basically a Roman relic with an engine on it. And uh, it often needed tweaking. So one day my brakes were loose. So I took it to my neighborhood mechanic and I rolled up and I told him, la mia freña non funciona. And that just wiped the smile from his face and the blood drained from his face as well. So I knew I said something wrong, but left the bike, went home, called my Italian boyfriend at the time and told him that I told the mechanic that my brakes didn't work, que la mia freña non funciona dead silence on the line. And then he started howling with laughter and told me that I told the mechanic that my pussy didn't work. That's good, you know, because we've had a lot of mistranslations, uh, but that's a good one. Uh, why don't you, yeah, why don't you do some walking? Just walk, walk, you're, you're free to walk. There she goes. Hello, uh, what's your name? I'm Jennifer. Jennifer, and where are you? I am in Elkridge, Maryland. Okay, and you're there with your friends. 
I am there with my friends, yes. <laughs> Don't be jealous. No, no, I'm, I'm really not. Uh, off you go with your story. So I'm a nurse, and as a new nurse, I was working with a patient who was admitted because his toes were kind of rotten. Um, they were very blackened. They were dried out. And um, I was taking care of him and went into his room and did my assessment and found that not only were his toes rotten, but his penis was rotten as well. And I laughed to one of my colleagues and said, you know, if that falls off on me, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to be a nurse anymore. <laughs> so a couple of days later, I went into his room and he had his water glass sitting next to his bed. And I glanced over at the water glass and floating in the glass was what looked like his penis. And I said, oh my God, what happened? And he looked at me and he looked at the glass and he said, oh, that was the sausage from my breakfast tray. It was kind of crunchy, <laughs> so I thought I would soften it up. You can walk. That is one of the oddest, best stories we've ever had. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Hello, Graham, how are you? I'm very well, what's your name, sir? Scott Hodges. Scott, okay. And uh, where are you, Scott? I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City, well, thank you for joining us and going to all out with the red, red t-shirt, red chair, the works. And uh, for you. what do you normally do in Salt Lake City? Uh, I'm actually a, a manager for a company and uh, I, I oversee some installers in Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas and make sure they install our telephones the correct way. Okay, off you go with this story. Okay, very good. Uh, several years ago, I lived in Southern California and I worked at a bank and I was a bank teller. And my, the teller next to me and I could tell we were getting robbed by two gentlemen <laughs> coming up to us. And we were waiting for it and I asked him, can I help you? And the guy slammed a note down in front of me and said, this is a robbery, give me all the money in the, in the cash register or in the, in the drawers. And so we did what they told and we threw our money into their bags and everything like that. And they took off and headed out the door. They even said, have a nice day. And uh, they headed out the door and I, we called the detectives and gave descriptions of them and everything. And my adrenaline started coming back down and I was like, I'm gonna pass out, I need to go sit down. My manager said, go sit in the lobby real quick on the comfy chairs and, and relax. So I went out there and I'm sitting down for about a couple seconds and I look over at my teller window and I see something sitting there. I'm like, what is that? And so I go walking over to it and I reach down and I picked up my robber's wallet. He had actually left his wallet on the counter. And I looked at it and went, yep, that's him. And when the detectives came to interview me, they said, can you describe him? I said, yep, he looks like that. Wow. So that story is too good for this show. Uh, true story. True story. <laughs> there's a there's a Netflix documentary series in that. <laughs> you can walk. Thank we, you. We've never known quality one. like it. Well done. <laughs> Amazing. Very rare a story is too good for the show.